Okay, hello. So I have here the Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Okay, so the first page, let me just bring this up so that way you can see exactly what's happening. So I was given these two pages by jo Joanna Basford, and I believe that they go like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm to color, I believe, just that one side and not the other side, but I'll have to ask to make sure. And I know for sure I have to color these pages. So what I'm going to start first by doing is I have a couple of ideas about how I want to do the background. So I'm going to sketch that in pencil first. So I'm going to, this page isn't going to be as complicated as this page. So I'm going to start with this page. And let's just start by sketching. Today I have an old school style Statler uh, mechanical pencil and it has, it allows you to vary the hardness and I'll probably also be using a eraser. Oops, sorry, this is upside down. This is just the Papermate Tough Stuff eraser stick. What I like about it is you can get the eraser point pretty small. So th those are my two um, drawing tools. So the first stage is just trying to figure out, I want, in the story, Ivy pulls this little bell. So I'm going to see, actually you know what, since I'm not sure about this, I don't I've not drawn on Ivy very much. Before I even go that far, I think what I'm going to do is do some sketching off of the paper. So for this, some good old-fashioned tracing paper. So here I have the Canson tracing paper. So what I'm going to do is put a sheet over that. I only have one copy of this page and I don't want to mess it up. So if I, if I do it first on tracing paper, make sure that I like it and then I'll transfer it or just redraw it. Okay, so now that makes me happier. Now I'm not as worried. So now the other thing I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to grab my coffee. So I have my coffee here of Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. And I'm going to look at other pages of the drawing of Ivy to make sure that I match her. Let's see here. Is there a page? Here we go. There's a page of Ivy. Okay, so you can't see it on your camera. But I have this book set up so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so Ivy has this cute swirly hair. And since she's little, I'm going to draw her about this big. So this is the face and that's hair and so we'll have about okay 
So I'm trying to draw her similarly to Joanna Basford, but of course, through years and years of drawing my own drawings, I have my own style. And that's going to come through. And that's okay, because that's the whole point, is just that we have some fun and express ourselves. Coloring is not about perfection or you know, we, I mean, we do our best, of course, but... So I am trying to draw Ivy's hair sort of similarly to how she draws it. I think I've drawn it a little curlier, maybe, than Joanna does. That's okay again, like I said. No big deal. Okay, so we have these nice swirly hair doodles. I think I'm gonna put one out here. Okay. Now she's, I'm gonna have her so that she's, she's looking at this bell. I'm gonna have her so she's reaching up so her shoulder would be here. So see, she has her hands kind of like that, and she has a sh sleeve, so let's bring that up like that, okay. Good, so now you see how I started, now I'm just going to go through and draw her dress. Now I've hit her hair is actually hidden. Actually, let me just go ahead and... Okay. Her dress would be about here. And... Her legs are also going to be hidden by the... Okay, so now that I've got the basis for my ivy, what I'm going to do is actually go through and refine her. Okay. So for this here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab any little piece of sketch paper. So I've got just a plain old piece of sketch paper here. I'm going to throw it under that just to make it easier for me to see. And now I'm actually going to fold the piece of paper in half over the drawing that I've already done. So it gives me another piece of tracing paper. So you can see here. At this point now I have my drawing. And I want to fix some things, so I'm going to go over it again. And I think, just to give me a sense of how it'll look when it's finished, I'm also going to go over it with this I have here, a Faber-Castell pit pen. I have it in extra small size. rather like this pen. So I'm going to go over this again. This time I'm actually going to look at a different photo. Or not photo, but a different picture of Ivy. Maybe something a little more of a profile, so you can get a sense of how she looks from the side. Let's see if there's any photos or pictures of her. Let's see, any most of the drawings are from the front. Ah, oh, here's one. Okay. All right. So now that I have this um, reference of Ivy from the side, I see Joanna does things a lot different. So I'm going to kind of change my drawing a little bit just to make it 
better, more close to the original. I'm trying to get the camera in such a spot where it's not in my way. Okay, here we go. So this is a very small drawing. Okay, so she curls her nose up like that. And Ivy has this flower tucked behind her ear, which I missed. So see, it's always nice to look. Make sure you look at what you're drawing. Because you never know when you miss something. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to do this is because I think her hair looks too wild. In the other images of Ivy, her hair doesn't look that crazy. I also wanted to fix her anatomy a little bit. So now here you see, I don't want her hair to be quite as wild. And her dress. Does it always have leaves on it? I thought it had stars on it. Are they different dresses? Leaves on it. Leaves on it, okay. Always leaves. Got it. Always good to check your references. And make sure you're doing the right thing. So let's let's see her. Her drawing has cuffs. the flow of it. So Ivy's hair is a lot less wild in this version. Let's just bring it all the way up. More like Joanna's style. I like it. Okay, and let's fix also fix her leg. So it needs to be more like, and then this. Cute. Okay, so now she has little leaves all over it. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the old drawing so you can see. This is what I came up with. So this is this will be the ivy that's tugging on the bell. So now, how do I get this onto the paper, you say? Well, there's a couple of ways. I'm going to opt for the very cleanest and most professional way if I can find it. 
so you hang tight. I'm going to go look for my graphite transfer paper if I can find it. Be right back. Okay, well, I couldn't find the artist stuff, but I did find this is tracing paper for, um, for like sewing. <laughs> I found some of that, so that'll work. And just so you know, the picture that I was looking at when I was drawing was this one. So that was my reference as I was drawing my new little girl here. So that and that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the page that I want to transfer. So this is that page there. Let's get a good spot. And I want to put a new ID right in here, like that. So that Ivy will be ringing the bell. Pretty cute, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this tracing paper. It looks like it's been used for patterns. You can see, because I was using it to make pattern tracing. But it should work, it's pretty good stuff. Um, and you can use any kind of paper that you like. Let's see if there's a fresh one. Yeah, there's a fresh one. Let's see here. White. Will not work. There we go. There's a peachy color. I got a fresh one here. Okay. So these, these sheets come in all different colors, um, which I kind of like actually. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to place this transfer sheet, this, this huge chunk and transfer sheet, right? I'm going to place that in between this tracing paper layer and the page itself. So the tricky part now here becomes lining everything up. So what I'm going to do, I have it pretty much set where I want it, right? I'm going to lift this up, put this paper down. I think I actually want to cut it out. Hold on. Let me cut a piece, that way it leaves flat. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting a piece of this transfer paper so that it's a lot smaller and easier to manage. Because before that big gigantic piece, it was all folded up. Okay, so... Good. Okay. So now I'm just gently placing this in between the paper and the tracing sheet. And now what I'm going to do is just very carefully go over my pen lines. What's nice about doing it in pen then is when I go over it in pencil, the shininess of the graphite shows up so I can see what I'm doing. Before I go through the whole trouble of doing the whole entire thing, I just lift it up and check and see if it's working. Oh, there's a hair in there. Let me just get rid of that. Yep, so you can see there is a red mark on the paper right here. So that is working properly. Let's get rid of that hair. Okay, sorry about that guys. Alright, so let's keep going. And move the 
camera a little bit so that way you can see better what I'm doing. Okay, so now we just keep going. Get every line that we just created. And I'm pressing rather hard. That's to make sure that it transfers because the line that's created is rather light. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I can always fix it later. Oops, sorry. This helps to transfer the basic drawing and just get me going on the final pen line. And this method also keeps your final page ni nice and clean. Um, I'm actually not going to fill out the rest of the hair because I like to freeform. The hair, but I will do. Okay, and I can freeform the leaves as well. Okay. So, what I've done is I've only partially transferred this, and the reason why is because it's actually a lot easier for me to then draw over it again. So, excellent. So, you can see here. So I have managed to transfer that successfully with that peachy transfer paper, which is kind of nice actually. I like that peachy color. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and ink over this. And this might seem like a lot of effort, but um, this is part of that collaboration project with Joanna Basford, and I feel like I want to do my best work, so that's why I've gone to all this trouble. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Alright, I really like the, the way that her hair finally came out. Which is good. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so then just to help me out a little bit, I'm also going to draw in some more leaves. There we go. Okay, so Ivy is brought in. Yay! Let's just fix that there. Good. Okay. So now that Ivy is in, I'm going to take a small little break and I'll be back. Okay, so here are the two pages together. Now with the additional ivy in the midst. So I think that looks rather good. So I'm going to keep going. Um, the next bit is, is that in the book it says that there's sun dappled light. So I think what I'm going to do is create light beams. And this is um, something that I've done before in a different uh, colored page and a lot of people have been asking me how I did it. So that's why I thought it would make a great video um, for me to show you how I'm doing this. So um, what I do first is I start with a ruler. Um, I have this nice clear ruler. And I just sort of decide, so I want Ivy to be in the light, right? So she, that's almost a directly downward beam though. I don't know if she's going to be in the light. Let's see if we can get her in there. Yep, you know what, I'm gonna make this a whole beam. Okay, so here, let's see if you can see. I do this. So I'm going to make Ivy in the bell. And I'm just using a regular standard graphite pencil. Um, it's a mechanical one, so it's more precise. But I'm not pressing hard. I just want a general idea of where this light is coming from. Okay, so now I want her to be in that beam completely. So then I'm going to go in, I'm going to do, to do the same thing and just... Okay, so now this box is also going to be lighter. So I'm just going to skip it. And just go through and anywhere where the line will show up. Okay. So now Ivy will be in a beam of light. I don't know if you can see that better this way. So you can see I just put that line going all the way up. So now I think I want to do another one. I like to do things in threes. Now I will have one on the other page. Maybe I should do three on this page and one on this page. I think that's exactly how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do three beams of light on this page. So there'll be one on Ivy, then two, maybe one here and one here. So that it'll be, or maybe even one big one and then one small one. I kind of like that. So the big one will be almost all the text. So it'll kind of look like the text is like glowing. Um, and then for this page, I think I'm just going to do one 
beam of light and it, it'll be like catching the bee here and most of this box and then maybe some smaller ones if I feel ambitious but I think I think just one on this page and three on this page so let's do that you can see that okay so I'm gonna move this page for now and just have this page in view so since I want most of that box to be in the light I'm going to start here and that's where it starts Okay, and then that will be one big theme. So maybe just to be just to have some fun with this. I won't do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving this little corner of the text because I like to do some special effects with that. I'll leave that little corner there, but otherwise, again, and I pivot from that point which I have now chosen, so everything's coming from the top center of the page, the center of the spread, rather. So now this one last beam will just be a little beam. I like to do things in odd numbers, I'm not sure why. Okay, so now I have, I hope you can see this okay, it's in pencil, so I have one beam coming down here, like that, then I have one large beam filling up most of this thing, but there is a corner and another corner which uh, won't be in that beam, and then there's a tiny little beam right here. So all together there are three beams of light that will be played on this page. And now let's move over on to this page with the bumblebee. Um, so I think I'm going to do one big beam like this. And for that, um, again what I'm going to do is now since the center, this is one full spread, so since it's coming from here, I want it to come from here so that way it's like the sun is right up above here and it's filtering through and giving like a beam of light throughout everything. So what I'll do is I'm gonna, I know it's coming from this direction here, but from this page is gonna come from this direction. And that's why, I, cause the, the, the light source is actually right there in the center. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have here, let me just put this page nearby so you have it right in here. I want one big beam, and I'd like it to be, um, here, let me actually move this a little bit better. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, I'll leave most of this. So here's the bottom of the beam of light. And again, skipping the text and just going, yeah, so that's nice. The beam of light will hit these mushrooms. And then I'm also going to swing this up and allow the beam of light to just hit the bumblebee. Actually, I want the bumblebee to be in the light. So I'm going to give him... give him his own beam. I think I should do three beams on this page too actually. Okay. So I'm going to put a beam here and this will be to end that text beam. And then I'm going to give the bumble his own beam. So we're, I'm, I'm knocking it up. You know, you only live once, why not? Okay, so then the bumble gets his very own beam. And we're gonna go like that. 
Okay, and then since I have two beams, I'm gonna just throw in a third one. And I'm gonna have it be a little sliver beam to kind of accent this bottom one here. So it'll just be a small little beam of light. But still be nice, I think, as an effect. And I made a mistake just then, so I'm gonna have to correct that. I drew through the text, which is a big no no. So I'm gonna take this big rock and eraser and just really gently lift up that pencil because I don't want to deal with that later. Okay. Yep, that's much better. Okay, so now I have... Oh man, I've got a task now. So I have three beans on this page and three beans on this page. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start in on the background. Uh, the reason why I do that is because I believe that the background really sets the stage for the mood. So, um, I still feel like this page is more complicated only because I have ivy on there. So I'm going to go ahead and start first with this page. So, let's, let me actually, um, grab my pencils. I'll be right back. I'll take a short break. Okay, so we're back. I have my pencils, I have all my tools. I also wanted to look up and I found a really nice reference photo because I've never drawn Sweet Bees before. Um, so I figured, yeah, so I found this really pretty reference photo. So those are the colors that I'll be using for the flowers. Um, so I just wanted to have something uh, there for me. Um, so, yep, so you'll see on my desk, the only thing that I'm going to be using for the, um, for this page are my pencils. So I have a set here of 24 Prismacolors, which I've then added to. I'll also be using my color wheel, um, and other than that, I'll probably end up using some sparkles and some gel pen stuff at the very end but for right now just pencils and I'm gonna get going so here we go I'm gonna mount this camera in here and I'm gonna start on the background first so before anything else I'm actually gonna start in the very middle now, when I do very dark backgrounds, which is actually what I'm going to do here, um, I start out with a fairly dark color, and in this case, I'll be starting out with the PC908 Dark Green. And what I'm going to do is, um, what I want to do is give the effect that the light is coming through. So I'm going to create some fake leaves. And that'll just help with the illusion that the light is coming down. Okay. So this leaf... Let's see, can you see this okay? I'm going to put the pages together and draw right through. What I do is I try to just go very lightly over the paper, but it exposes some of the problems with the paper. I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually some imperfections with the sheet right here. 
So, by going over the paper very lightly, and, um, and doing this whole exercise, and not pressing color by the way, even though I want this color to be dark, just shows me where the paper is flawed. So then I can go in and very carefully fix the flaws in the paper itself. So I'm going to very carefully, and this is the process that takes the most amount of time, so in editing I would not be surprised if I speed this up. What I'm doing here is just rotating the page along with the camera, so you'll have the same view, but this just makes it easier for me to access the page. Um, the camera's kind of in my way. So I don't worry about being perfect with this first layer. The only thing I can, I'm concerned about is just exposing the impurities and the imperfections of the paper. So now I'm going to go through and this is the binding of the page here, all through here. So I want to go ahead and make this look like very, very thick lines. Lines and leaves and all sorts of things. So that's where, this is where my light source is coming from. So I'm going to leave that go for now. Up here, this is, this is where my light source is coming from. Up here. Ooh. And all of the beams of light are coming out of, from behind this leaf. So what I'm going to do now is just create more additional leaves, vines, and so forth. just gently again. I'm not really worried about, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not really worried about creating the perfect shaded piece right now. The only thing I'm doing is just trying to get it all laid out so that way if there's something I don't like I can, I have the room to change and fix things right now. Thing is permanent. But the lighter you go in when you first start, the easier it is to change and fix things if something goes wrong. Okay, so there's that leaf. And I'm just going to keep going down. So let's see, I'll have... There's, this is like a vine, right? I think sweet pea is a vine. So I'll actually have this. Okay, that it, it'll get lost in the crack because this is really just background decoration. So I'm just drawing in the line of the vine, the vine line, the, the vine line, yeah. <laughs> and then.
So I have this guy growing right here. Now I'll just give that vine a little thickness. And this is all going to be in dark shadow. I want it to feel like it's really thick. Because that's what the text says. That's what the story says. That this is, this is so thick it's impassable. So I want to feel like up here, up at the top here, we'll have some lightness to it. But all the way down here it'll be dark and thick. It's really hard to see what's happening. So... We can go, let's see, we'll do a little crown leaf here. And the reason why I'm drawing in the foreground first is because then when I go in in the background, um, I can reserve these areas that I'm picking to be other objects. I can reserve that, those spots. So I'm not trying to be perfect here, I'm just going in and adding my own drawing. And I'm not drawing with pencil anymore, um, since this is an area that can be easily fixed and changed. I'm going in right with colored pencil, knowing that if worst case comes to it, I can always make it really dark and you won't be able to see any mistakes. So I'm not really worried too much, not fussing, just trying to get some, some line work going. Okay. So I think I'm gonna do a leaf like this. Somewhat symmetrical, but not. Okay, so that line will just sort of be in the middle of the page. Now let's add some more detail, some more curly cues. and inked in and now I've gone ahead and just lightly drawn in with colored pencil the design that I want for the middle of the book so now I think my next step is to go ahead and start filling in the dark dark background and this is going to take me a while so I'll probably time lapse it um, I'm going to start on this page with ivy and then work my way to the bumblebee. So for this here, I'm going to start actually at the bottom. So I want to reserve Okay So now I'm going to 
change colors. So I was using dark green, and now I'm going to use PC, I don't know if you can see this, 907, and that's the peacock green. And the reason why I use this color for the area behind it is because this dark green is a warmer green, and then the peacock green is a cooler green, so the cooler the color, the farther it fades off into the distance. So again, I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm just laying a nice, even color down. Uh, the only thing I want to do here is just again expose the grain of the paper. Um, I am pressing a little bit harder than earlier because this is going to be extremely dark. But I don't want to get rid of that grain, uh, that, that paper tooth. So what, what I'm doing right now is just going through and so here if you see you can kind of see that there's some imperfections in the paper and that is a-okay no problem there's always a way to fix it but by doing this very methodical light layer first this is a very dark color but I I'm going pretty light, like this is a pretty medium tone. By doing this, it really allows you to see what you've got going on on the, on the surface of the paper before you then go ahead and just dive in and see now this is extremely light. This I'm barely touching the paper. It gives a very, very soft green color. I don't know if you can even see it. It's very, very light. So that's that's this is the lightest I'd be going if I wanted the color to be a medium tone. And the reason why is I love building up my layers. So I would hate for I would hate for me to want to layer in another color like blue or something into this spot. and not have the value to do that because I've gone too dark. So always when I first start out, no matter what color it is, I always go at least three to five shades lighter initially when I first start out. Okay, so now that I've gotten that started, I'm gonna connect these pages together and do the same. I want these to look like they're seamless. And since she did give them to us separate, which is very, very nice, by the way, I'm just going to go in and match the color, the same exact shade.
Okay. So this is going to take me a while. So as you can see, I'm just working through it. I may end up speeding up half of this stuff in post, in the editing process. But the reason why I'm showing you is because there's no magic to how I color. I have people ask me all the time, how do I do this? How do I do this? Right? Well, it takes a long time. There is no magic. Just a lot of work and a lot of fun. And you just gotta be patient. And be willing to take your time. You can't go quickly or you you it will look like it basically. It will look like you rushed. So that's my advice is just take your time. Go slow. Enjoy yourself. Do not feel that it is a race. It's not a race. In fact, I think the slower I go, the better it looks every time. So I'll just give you a wider view of what I'm doing. So you see here, I'm just filling in the darker areas that this area will be nearly black when I'm done the area I'm coloring right now but for now it just stays this nice light green um again I'm just exposing the paper imperfections and working out my composition mostly so this stage does not have to be perfect I'm not fussy um, I just gently try to layer some color on the page. Um, the only thing here that I try to really work hard on is to not get too many noticeable seams. Um, because then it makes it a lot harder to work out later. So you just try and be gentle and careful. And, um... Take your time, basically. Now what's nice about this page is that it has a lot going on, but it also has a lot of background. So that's what gave me the idea to draw Ivy. I felt like I had the space to do it, and I think people expect it from me now uh, that I'm drawing in stuff in the background, so. It'd be a nice touch just to add in Ivy on the page. Um, hopefully Joanna doesn't mind. Seems like she probably won't. But we will see what she thinks. Okay. Alright. Hello. Well. Things are happening. So again, it's about 22 minutes in, so I'm going to take a quick break. The thing about me and coloring is, is I never sit still for very long, so I find coloring in long stretches to be very, very difficult for me. So you'll see throughout this entire coloring, I'll be taking short breaks, and that's just because I need to get up and stretch my legs and do some things and, you know, just walk around mostly. I can't stay in the same spot for too long. But I will be back soon. Okay, bye. Alright, we're back here for another round. And I'm going to keep going uh, with the background. So, this is going to take a while so it might get speeded up.
Okay, well as I color this, I'm realizing I'm losing light, so I probably will have to stop here for today. However, I'll just show you what I've got so far. So, my progress for day one of Ivy and the Inky Butterfly collaboration is that I was able to successfully draw in Little Miss Ivy here, and then I also started in on the background of the the two page spread so um yep that's it so far and i'll be back again tomorrow 
with another drawing session, coloring session, and hopefully uh, we'll get more done. Alright, thanks for watching so far. See you tomorrow. Bye.